everybody, welcome back to Project Spatial. I am Katie Scheuer and today I have some critiques of story maps for you. So I thought this would be kind of a fun way to go through story maps and just, you know, kind of see what I like, what I think is important to look at, and I would be really interested to hear what your guys' critiques of are and maybe some things that you struggled with or if there's a map you guys want me to look at and critique in a future video. So please leave a comment down below and while you're down there make sure to hit subscribe and the bell so you're notified every time that I put up a video and if you like this video please give it a like I would really appreciate it. All of those things help me spread the word of GIS which helps you and me increase our spatial impact. So today I went through and looked at the Esri Solutions Gallery. And if you guys haven't been on that, I will put a link down in the description below. But the nice thing about Esri is that they allow you to put your information up into this gallery, and then you can kind of get inspiration and see what other people are doing. I thought it would be kind of fun to look through these and see if there was one that I could kind of critique for you guys. And I think that we really should be re embracing more critiquing of our work. It's not something that I see a lot of people in GIS doing, and it's a great way to learn. I know that my personal work I have done and I've put stuff out and I've either made compromises because of time or I didn't do something thoroughly because I just didn't know how, or you know I just didn't realize what I was doing wrong. And so by having somebody else with a fresh perspective that comes in that has absolutely no idea what you're doing, but has a good eye and is able to go through and critique your information for you can be really helpful and help you learn a lot. With a story map, I always like to have a beginning, a middle, and an end to my story. So that way I know that I am completing that story loop and people are really going to understand what I'm trying to get across. In the story map that I picked today, we are going to be going over the Mayor's Garden Contest of 2019 in Boston. I wanted to pick this one out because I thought that their story itself was really good. So in the beginning, they grab your attention right away in the beginning pa paragraph. Their Mayor Walsh has announced the winners of the Mayor's Garden Contest. The thing that I love is that first paragraph where they are talking about how they have announced the winners. Now instantly I'm intrigued, like, hey, I wanna know who these winners are. I wanna see how they won. Like, what is this contest? What did they have to do? Why did they win? You know, and so we're, we're all attracted to those kinds of things. So I really loved that in that first sentence even, that they were able to grab my attention. If you go down, they talk about the that there's nine different categories. They list the nine categories, which I so appreciate. Don't put any kind of list in a paragraph form. Put it in bullet points. It's just do it. <laughs> um, and then they talk about how the first, what the first place winners receive and some more information about the contest. On to the map. Now, the first thing that I noticed about this map was not something that I liked. <laughs> um, the first thing that found, jumped out at me is the water. The water is so blue and it's dark blue. There's nothing else of real saturated color on this map except for the flowers, which I believe is what my attention is supposed to be going to, but then the water is so stark compared to the white land that it brings all of my attention to the water and I truly lose the, the focus of what I'm supposed to be looking at is the little flowers. So I really didn't like that. Even making the flowers bigger I think would have been nice because they are, you know, kind of sporadically spread out, um, but Fading that water into the background more would have helped so much. Just by making it either less saturated, making it um, even not blue, like make it gray or something, like really fade it off into the background and make it very similar, but not quite similar to the land. Because in reality to the story, I, I don't care that there's water here. I don't care necessarily that there's rivers coming through. Um, it's not related to the story. It's just there for reference information so you know where you are in the world. So if you go down in the story a little bit, it get to this area where there are some colored text. Now, I really appreciated this because whenever you see colored text mixed in with black and white text, you're 
eye is immediately drawn to it and so you end up reading that color text. And what it is is actually instructions. So it tells you this map is an interactive map. Click on a flower to see the con contest winners in that neighborhood. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I went over and I clicked a flower, but then I was like, well, I clicked over to the next one and it only has one winner. And I was kind of like, well, what's the difference between these neighborhoods? So I zoomed in trying to get more information and while the neighborhood names pop up now, I, I still don't know where these neighborhoods are. Like I don't know the boundaries of these neighborhoods and I think that's something that's really missing. I either would have not used the flowers at all or I would have used them as a centroid to the polygon of the neighborhood. And I would have just probably used the polygon of the neighborhood really because I mean, the flowers are cute and they give you a central place to click, but they're really not necessarily. What you want is the neighborhood because that's what you're trying to focus on. So why not give us the boundary of the neighborhood so then if we're curious about where that neighborhood is or, you know, hey, does my Aunt Kathy live in that neighborhood or something like that? I don't have an Aunt Kathy like that. But just to be able to see what's going on in that neighborhood, I, I need to have the boundaries because I don't know Boston. I don't know Boston's neighborhoods. And I can guarantee you that most of the people that even live in Boston don't know all of the neighborhood boundaries. So the next piece of information on here is, again, in a different color text. So you want to, you're, they're telling you to read that part. So I really like that they put instructions in here because there are a lot of people that use these story maps that are part of the public and they don't know what to do with this. They know it's a website, but they might get kind of lost in the map. They might not understand that there's more information down below. So keep scrolling. So I do like that they put that note in there. So as you scroll down, you get to the first category, which is porch, balcony, and container garden. Now, I really liked that they put the nice big first place picture on the left and then they put the second place picture on the right and then they also put the third place picture on the right and then if you scroll down a little bit more it shows the winners and with their names and all of that sort of thing so i really liked that kind of layout of having the first place winner the second place winner the third place winner and then you know, all of the people and their pictures. I really appreciated that. I thought that was really nice. The only critique that I would give is that even though they have this little bit of text up here where it says first place left, I, I really wish they would have not put that there and actually just put it on the picture itself. Guys, we have photo editors. We can edit text on photos. <laughs> Take advantage of that. They could have easily put that up in the upper left corner, upper right corner, somewhere on the photo itself, which would have brought a more attention to it. Um, and it also would have just identified that that picture is what it is instead of having it on the right hand side. As you keep scrolling down, you get to a point where you have gone through all of the different categories and you get down to the bottom, which is the Hall of Fame winners. Now, again, I wish I would have had a little bit more text on the picture itself. Like, I don't know really who these people are. I think one of them's the mayor. I don't know who the mayor is, I don't live in Boston, so it would have been really nice just having their names and their um, titles or you know their positions or whoever they are um, just on the picture itself. You know, They could have put it right down at the bottom, kind of by their legs. Um, it would have been out of the way of the main focus of the picture, but it just would have identified the people in the picture very quickly and easily. All in all, I really liked the fact that they had a very clear story from start to finish. So they really set up their story at the beginning. They tell you, hey, these are contestant winners of this contest. They explain the contest. They give you a nice bullet point list of all of the different categories. They give you a map so you can kind of identify where these winners were. And then in the middle, they give you all of the pretty pictures of all the different winners and all of their gardens. You get down to the end and you get the Hall of Fame winners, which is a nice way to just tie a bow to all of this information and the contest um, in itself. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, again, please make sure to give it a like because then I know to make these types of videos again and I will see you soon. Bye.